Hey everyone, I'm Tara Lynn of Geek Saga Entertainment and welcome to the Geek Saga Show's solo podcast series, Impulsive Hyperfocus. First things first, follow me at a Geek Saga on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, Twitter for insight into my life and of course updates about this and other Geek Saga entertainment endeavors. And if you want early access to these and other podcast-only recordings, links to personal Spotify playlists, show notes, writing samples, and more, check out the Geek Saga Entertainment Patreon at patreon.com slash geeksaga underscore entertainment. If you haven't listened to my previous Impulsive Hyperfocus episodes, I always start out by highlighting one thing about myself. This time around, I think I'm going to go with the fact that up until a few years ago, I never really bothered with horror or scary movies or shows. Not because I scare easily, um, the opposite, in fact. I never really found any of the ones that I did watch to actually be scary, so it was kind of a what's the point sort of thing. Actually, when I was in high school, my brother, Chad, who isn't my blood brother, but we essentially grew up next door to each other, he and I went on a quest to find a truly scary movie. We watched a crap ton of them and never did find one that truly frightened us. It actually wasn't until I tried watching The Haunting of Hill House when I lived by myself, like, I don't know, what was it? five, six years ago that it first came out that I was freaked out enough to realize, shit, I can't finish watching this show while I am living alone. Uh, I did eventually finish it once I wasn't living by myself and in the end realized that it wasn't actually as scary as it seemed at first. So live and learn, I guess. But Anyway, a couple years ago, Dean and I started doing the thing that so many other people do, uh, that being basically going out of our way to try and watch horror movies or shows during October. And while this year we haven't been as dedicated to that as we were last year or the year before, I, in the spirit of the season and having run out of other things to have on in the background while I work, finally started watching True Blood on HBO. Honestly, the main reasons I'd never watched it before were that A, I've never been big into the whole vampire thing, and B, everything about Twilight turned me off pretty much all vampire stuff for a long time. And I know that technically, uh, at least the Sookie Stackhouse books came before Twilight. I believe True Blood may have even started airing if not before the first Twilight book was published, then around that same time. But I didn't know about True Blood until after I knew about Twilight. So, and listen, as I record this, I'm into the beginning of True Blood season four, and it's probably more amusing to me than anything else. But at the same time, I'm enjoying the overall entertainment value, if that makes sense. And as someone who really appreciates fandom, I'm kind of wishing I hadn't missed out on the heyday of the True Blood fandom, even if I find the show pretty silly. Ooh, that was actually kind of a slightly longer uh, highlight about myself than usual. So I guess I'll finally get into my actual episode. Basically, now that I'm doing these solo episodes, I had to do one about Halloween, it being my favorite holiday and all. I definitely have a lot of great Halloween stories, but I also knew that if I got started on those, I'd end up telling most, if not all of the good ones and forget to leave any for future Halloween episodes. So instead, I decided it would be fun to bug my friends for some of their Halloween stories and use at least some of those to pick and choose from my own, shall we say, repertoire. But uh, before I do get into those, with this being my first all Halloween all the time episode, I suppose I should talk about why this holiday is so important to me, even though, to be honest, I can't recall any specific Halloween or Halloween event or whatever that truly cemented my favoritism for it over other holidays. Really, it was probably just a buildup of all the Halloweens of my childhood, most of which I, of course, only have vague memories of that pretty much just run together at this point, though I really don't remember a time when my family didn't make at least a sort of big deal about it. 
For instance, up until I was 15, we lived on a somewhat busy street that wasn't really a trick-or-treating street. Plus, our house was built on a hillside with the street actually located above our house, making it next to impossible for people to come to us for trick-or-treating. So instead, my parents would garb us in our cheapest possible Halloween costumes and bring us first to my maternal grandparents' house about 15 minutes away to trick-or-treat in their neighborhood. But then after a quick trip up and down their street, we'd get in the car and travel another 30 minutes to my paternal grandparents' house, which is where things got really good because they lived in one of those fancy neighborhoods where more than one house actually gave out full-size candy bars. On top of that, most years we had cousins or step-cousins from their respective side of the family joining us at one or both grandparents' houses, cousins who were mostly close enough in age to make it all even more fun. And when I was younger, my dad would even dress up to take us trick-or-treating. One year, he really went all out and made his own costume out of cardboard and tinfoil. I'm sure there were other things involved, but just for some reason, I just had this like, that time my dad made a costume out of cardboard and tinfoil, like very specific wording memory. I don't know. Which back in the 80s, this was also like pretty extreme, I think. But even more extreme was the fact that the costume he made was Mac Tonight. And this was a character from McDonald's commercials in like 1986 and 87, I think, is what I saw. I believe the commercials might have aired for a couple years after that, but they were big in 86 and 87. So like, I was very, very young. I have no idea why I actually have any memory of this, but I really do. But anyway, Mac Tonight was an anthropomorphic piano playing crescent moon inspired by the song Mac the Knife. And also, of course, referencing the infamous Mickey D's Big Mac. Just a bit of history because, well, I'm me. The original Mac the Knife song was from a musical called McHeath. And it's about a knife-wielding criminal from the London underworld. However, the song was popularized by Bobby Darin in, I believe, the late 1950s. And apparently, the advertising agency that came up with Mac Tonight listened to several versions of the song before deciding to create their quote-unquote own version with original lyrics. But listen, (laughs) this is how the song went. When the clock strikes... Half past six, babe, time to head for golden lights. It's a good time for the great taste. Dinner at McDonald's, it's Mac tonight. Come on, make it Mac tonight. Yeah, no, I'm not kidding. That's maybe a little bit off of what it 100% sounded like, but very, very close. Now, if anyone listening knows the Bobby Darren version of this song, you probably aren't surprised that McDonald's was eventually sued by Bobby Darren's son for copyright infringement and had to stop airing these advertisements. But uh, not before my dad essentially cosplayed this singing moon dude. <laughs> Granted, usually my dad just dressed up as something simple like an army ranger or a deer hunter, and I'm going to use the latter as a, maybe not the best cue, but as a cue to talk about a story from one of my friends, Becca. She wrote, when I was 15 or 16, a neighbor kid hid in the bushes at my house with a deer call. And when I came home from trick-or-treating, he started blowing it and it scared the shit out of me because it sounded like a goat. And you know, goats equal Satan. (laughs) I don't actually think I knew that when I was a kid or possibly even when I was in my teenage years. But Becca also said, I started to cry and ran inside and told my mom, who knew about it, that there was something in the bushes. And she was like, no, you're just imagining it. And so I went out to show her and I'm shaking and crying. And suddenly I hear my neighbor laughing and I run up to him and punch him. (laughs) So upon reading this, my first reaction was, (laughs) <laughs> yes, the punch at the end is very Becca. But also, I had to ask, wait, your m- mom knew about it? Like, knew this kid was hiding in the bushes to scare you and then tried to convince you it was your imagination? And Becca told me, yes, her mom did know. And Becca had thought the neighbor's goat maybe escaped and her mom told her to go look for it. And just, you know, wow, Becca's mom. <laughs> That's... uh Like, you see your kid running in and, like, screaming and crying about a scary satanic goat in the bushes by your house and you try to convince them they're imagining it even though you know what's going on 
Lord. <laughs> I also love that Becca mentioned that she was still trick-or-treating at 15 or 16 because so was I. Granted, I'm about eight years older and I'm not sure when or if the whole trick-or-treating as a teenager isn't cool thing really became a thing, but it not being a thing teens, you know, should quote unquote do if they wanted to be cool did come up when I was talking to my friend Jeff about his Halloween recollections. Jeff said, when I was in high school, I would help my friend run his haunted yard. I dressed all in black and pretended I was a dog. I would lurk in the bushes and make barking sounds and growls. So of course, I had to know, why did you always have to be a dog? And Jeff explained, we all had different roles. The guy who lived there wanted to run the ghosts. He had them on pulleys and ropes so he could make them float down when people came. And I guess I had the best bark. You know, like I told Jeff, that's super cool, though. I tried to do a haunted house thing at our house one year later in high school after we actually moved into a neighborhood, but my parents would have none of it. <laughs> and Jeff told me that his friends and I liked Halloween, but of course it was the 90s, so it wasn't cool to trick or treat as a high schooler. That was kids stuff. And like I kind of already mentioned, uh, I told him, oh, please, I trick or treated every year except my junior year. And that year, the only reason I didn't was because Halloween. Halloween was on a Saturday night and I threw a party. You know, Jeff was like, well, what can I say? You were cooler than me. And really, like, in the context of trick-or-treating not being cool, I would assume I was less cool, really. But but uh, that gets me thinking about that junior year Halloween party of mine. I remember the party itself being fun, um, but I had just gone through a breakup with my first real boyfriend and was also crushing on this guy who had been hardcore flirting with me since the beginning of the school year. A guy who would eventually become my first real love, much as you can call high school love real love, that is. He was a senior and obviously way too cool to show up to a dry Halloween party, especially when I had a lot of underclassmen there as well. <laughs> but uh, he did pop in for a few minutes at the end and brought his best friend with him. And then a day or two later, we had our first kiss after flirting over a box of Dots candy, like a Halloween sized box of Dots candy. And just to be clear, neither of us really wanted this candy because, ew, gross, dots, who eats those? But that little box of candy did serve as a great vehicle for flirting over until we worked up the nerve to kiss. So there's that, I guess. Uh, weirdly enough, while that uh, first love of mine broke my heart, the best friend who he dragged to that party, um, who didn't even like me at first, by the way, eventually became my husband. Uh, we are divorced now, but the two of us are still best friends. And even though our first, my, my ex-husband and my first Halloween memory together was that pretty awkward one, it was always a big holiday for us because we could trace our history all the way back to Halloween 1998. Now, some of that might seem like a random aside, but I promise it isn't totally random. As my friend Danny sent me some of his core Halloween memories, one of which was, I had my second kiss while laying in a pile of leaves with my first boyfriend, Halloween 2001. I was wearing a black wig. I never got all of the leaves out of the wig. Honestly, my Halloween relationship history combined with Danny's adorable memory does make me wonder how many other relationships really kicked off on or because of Halloween. But that said, Danny also had a couple of other tales to tell, including that one year my aunt and cousins watched Invasion of the Body Snatchers and I was so scared. Possibly also that year I was trick-or-treating with my cousins and I was dressed as a mime. The biggest part was the makeup. I would do the stuck in a box when they answered the doors. I don't remember, but I don't think I said trick or treat because I was committed to my costume. Listen, I always respect being committed to a costume. I wish I could say I had been when I was a kid, but if I was, I don't really remember it. In fact, the only costume I remember from my childhood was from one year when my parents sent me to school dressed as a refrigerator, which sounds really weird. But listen, they didn't have much money to buy Halloween costumes for myself and my two sisters. So they took a box and some paint and markers and creativity and made what I remember being a really neat and different costume that I was super proud of. Like, you didn't have a door that opened and there was like 
I don't know if they use like actually took labels off of things or, or maybe like the fronts of boxes or if they just drew things. I, I can't remember all those details, but had like products in it or whatever. Granted, I still lost the school costume contest to some kids dressed in like store bought princess costumes or some nonsense, which as a kid was disappointing to me. And of course, made me as a really young kid, I think like second or maybe third grade, very self-conscious of my homemade costume that was created from a box. But as an adult, I look back on this whole thing in a much more appreciative light and feel like if I took a box and made myself a refrigerator costume and wore it to say Dragon Con, it would be one of those totally random hit cosplays. <laughs> But before I move on to the last couple of stories I received, I have one last story from Danny that gave me a chuckle, whether he meant it to or not. He said, my aunt loved Halloween. She used to hide Hershey's bars in piles of leaves. And obviously, I had to follow up on this because I hope she checked those leaf piles for dog surprises first. And Danny told me there wasn't a dog. But honestly, I can't help but wonder, what about neighbor's dogs or strays? Ugh. Still, love that his aunt was a fellow Halloween lover and tried to make it more fun for her nibblings. To be honest, now that I'm an adult with nibblings of my own, I do wish I could have been the aunt whose house they came to for trick-or-treating because my neighborhood in Greenville is perfect for it. But I've spent more Halloweens away than at home during their trick-or-treating years. And I don't know, there's no point in regretting all of the awesome Halloweens I've spent away from home. But uh, not to digress too much, because the only tie-in I can find between those slots and the next story I have to share is mentioning my nibblings, two of whom belong to my middle sister, Christy, and she's the one who provided this hilarity that I'm about to read. <laughs> she wrote, One time at Halloween, I got kicked out of a club, and I got back in line with some of my other friends who were still waiting to get in, and one of them let me wear their porky pig mask to see if I could get back in. Well, I slid right back in. Mind you, I had to pretty much walk the club in that mask all night. This is definitely another thing I had to follow up on because, of course, I had questions. I needed to know what year this was, and Christy told me 2006, and like, why in the year of our Lord 2006 was someone wearing a porky pig costume at all, let alone to a club? It's just such an odd costume choice for like this entire century. Not that Christy would know why her friend chose that costume or if she knew back then who would remember why some friend of yours wore some random Halloween costume nearly 18 years later and shoot while I can remember what I wore for Halloween as far back as at least senior year in high school, that's either because I have very specific memories of certain Halloweens, was really proud of some of those costumes, or at the very least simply have pictures of them, you know? But since I'm on that subject, my Halloween costumes from senior year until, well, I'm going to go up to 2012 because that particular costume is actually a decent-ish kind of maybe segue into the final story that I received. So let's see. Uh, starting with senior year of high school, a cowboy. Then I did not dress up freshman year of college because I was in rehearsals for the musical Victor Victoria that like whole week and weekend before and after because the musical went live like the first weekend of November. So yeah, no, no time to be dressing up in costume my freshman year of college, unfortunately. What would have been my sophomore year of college, I was on the Walt Disney World College program and did not one, but two WWE wrestling costumes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, the first was Trish Stratus, and I wore it to the Ad Lib, aka Adventureland and Liberty Square employee Halloween party that took place in the Haunted Mansion at Disney World after hours. I might talk more about this in a future Halloween episode, but just as a note, I did go into it quite a bit, I believe, when I was doing my Walt Disney World College Program 2001 20-year reunion series a few years back. So if you're all interested, that Halloween, I think it was just Halloween-themed episode, or maybe it was like a fall, or it might have been holidays, but I don't, 
I don't think so. I don't know. Whatever that episode of of my WDWCP 20 year reunion series, it, it's episode 50 of the Geek Saga podcast if you want to give it a listen. Anyway, the second WWE wrestler costume I wore was much better. Uh, I was Mighty Molly and my coworker and friend went as the Hurricane. This was to a party at one of our coworkers and friends apartments, which was also a blast. I'm pretty sure I stayed up like all night or if I got any sleep, it was like an hour or an hour and a half, maybe less. I don't know. Uh, And I was actually flying back to Connecticut where my family still lived for like a couple days visit because I just really miss my family. I'd never been away from home (laughs) anywhere, anywhere near that long uh, or away from them anywhere near that long before. But anyway, yeah, I stayed up all night and my friend actually, when he drove me to the airport, he was still in his (laughs) hurry. King costume and we had to like go through toll booths too so people saw him driving me to the airport at like six in the morning in a wwe wrestler costume anyway uh <laughs> <laughs> well, getting getting a little off track there. The next few years are a bit of a blur. I want to say that the year after the WWE costumes, I just had like a devil costume. Then I was a pirate. Then Marilyn Monroe. And after the Marilyn Monroe year, well, the first Marilyn Monroe year, which I'll get into in a second, I actually had a Halloween costume that I consider to this day to be my first cosplay because I put together a Jean Grey Phoenix outfit from like closet items and thrifted pieces. And I think I did buy a pair of shoes, like a new pair of shoes. But it was, you know, mostly put together. I did some minor alterations to uh, like a velvet or velour whatever duster jacket or something that I got at a thrift store listen it was not a great costume but I also dyed my hair like electric red for it so yeah I don't know I I, to this day like I said I consider that to be basically my first cosplay granted the next year I went back to store-bought as I bought what I think was the Holly Madison themed playboy cheerleader outfit and I'm just gonna say nothing against Holly Madison at all the girls next door show has and remains my one uh, sort of guilty pleasure even though I don't know if I really love that phrase or term or whatever anymore uh, reality tv show and I've actually really enjoyed listening to Holly and Bridget's Girls Next Level podcast but also that costume was not not a mistake um mostly like just for the playboy branding and stuff you know and I also a cheerleader really Tara I've never been the cheerleader type so uh anyway I I made it back to Disney World for Halloween the year after that and dressed up as Tinkerbell. Then there was another Marilyn Monroe costume, followed by a flapper, uh, Alice in Wonderland from the Tim Burton movie, and Daenerys from Game of Thrones, which is where I'm going to take a break from waxing on about my Halloween costumes from years gone by. Because while I had worn that Danny costume at Dragon Con less than two months before Halloween that same year, um, and I, I hate to I hate to give years like constantly, but at this point we're in 2012 um, and it has nothing to do with like aging myself or whatever. It's just like in 2008, I did this into that, you know, stupid, not going to do it. But at this point we are in 2012. So yeah, I, I had worn that Danny costume at Dragon Con in 2012. And when I wore it for Halloween, very few people actually recognized who I was dressed up as when I was in it. But I did wear it for the one and only Halloween that I've spent in New Orleans. And yes, it was as awesome as you'd expect. I actually wish I could remember that Halloween better than I can, but it has been about a dozen years and we spent a lot of time drinking that day and night. So my recollections are basically just flashes of memory. I will say that my significant other at the time, Steve, and my friend Jonathan were dressed as the Blues Brothers. And honestly, not only did they have nearly screen accurate outfits, but they both actually looked the part. Plus, Steve even taught himself how to play when the Saints go marching in on the harmonica and at one point even serenaded a streetcar full of people as we made our way from watching a zombie parade and partying in the French Quarter to Tipitina's Uptown where we saw this really great band called Galactica play. 
And sure, it would have been nice if more people actually recognized my costume, but it was also awesome seeing how excited so many people were to see Steve and Jonathan as Elwood and Jake. I honestly don't have a single negative memory from that day or night, though the same probably can't be said for the couple who makes an appearance in my friend Chris's Halloween in New Orleans tale. I think he's actually been to New Orleans around Halloween a few times now, but this anecdote of his is particularly unforgettable. It involves him running into a couple who were dressed as Buttercup and Wesley as Dread Pirate Roberts from Princess Bride, and Chris told me they looked gorgeous in the early afternoon in a dark corner of Lafitte's. Uh, Side note from yours truly, for those of you who don't know much about New Orleans, Lafitte's is a famous old bar in the French Quarter that doesn't have any electric lights inside. But uh, anyway, back to Chris's story. Apparently, he saw them again eight hours or so later by a bathroom in a courtyard behind some bar on Bourbon Street, and Wesley was holding Buttercup's hair as she puked her guts out into a trash can. (laughs) At this point, he yelled, as you wish, as he walked by. And while Wesley laughed, well, Buttercup was busy puking and Chris admitted, probably not amused. Listen, no judgment on Buttercup, of course. And sure, don't get me wrong, I've definitely had some not great Halloween experiences. But man, as good as it is that she had someone to take care of her, puking in a Bourbon Street trash can is something I wouldn't want to experience literally ever. I wasn't even there, but I do really hope she was okay after that. Also, I'm sitting here wondering if I should use this as a segue to talk about some of my not so great Halloween experiences... But to be honest, that's not the route I want to take with this episode because my great memories far outweigh the handful of crappy ones I have. So instead, I think I'm going to end this episode by talking about how much fun I've had the past few years. I've actually spent every Halloween since 2020 in California, and we're really lucky to have some super cool neighbors who are also really into the holiday. Plus, we live in a really big neighborhood that is great for trick-or-treating. My truly great California Halloween exploits began in 2021 when me, Dean, and our friends Aaron and Carlos all donned Cobra Kai costumes and spent all night acting the part while we imbibed with the neighbors and handed out candy to more kids than I could possibly count. I mean, when I say like acted the part, it was a lot of things, but we even went and bought like a case or two of Coors Banquet and were drinking that and pretty much only that all night. So realizing that the best part about that year was the theme, we went even more all out in 2022 when we donned Taco Bell sauce packet costumes and made the house into Taco Hell complete with a giant homemade backlit sign in the Taco Bell font and a big devil inflatable Not to mention actually buying a crap ton of tacos from Taco Bell and handing out those or candy. Like we were giving people the option if they wanted a taco, they could have a taco instead of candy. The only reason we had an option was because we weren't sure how well the tacos would go over and if they went over well, how long they would last. Um, They did last us a while because like I said, we bought a lot of them. But yeah, in the end, it was good. We were doing either or. But we also had a sizable bowl of Taco Bell sauce packets that people could just take as well, whether they chose a taco or candy. And there were like a lot of kids teenagers mainly who were just taking like handfuls of sauce packets I don't know it was it was funny like you do you kids and then last year we had a whole Mario set up Dean made a near life-size like small near near small life-size I guess not like a giant one a uh, chain chomp that we chained to the tree in our front yard. We decorated the front of the house with brick cubes. We had Wario and Waluigi skeletons guarding our candy bowl, um, a Luma Lee in a cage. I could go on and on. I dressed as Luigi. Our friend Carlos was Mario. Aaron was Yoshi. And Dean was Donkey Kong, or rather a weirdly scary version of Donkey Kong, because he wore one of those inflatable gorilla costumes that looked kind of mean with a Donkey Kong tie around the neck. And he got a kick out of standing still in the front yard until people walked up and then jumping around and making like gorilla noises. We also even handed out foam stars as well as candy and had green and red jello shots for the adults. 
Honestly, Halloween out here is by far the biggest, maybe really the only thing I'm going to miss when we've left California for good. And of course, we're going big again this year. We would be even if it wasn't likely going to be our last in this house. But either way, our theme for 2024 is Ghostbusters. And I can't wait to share pictures and stories from what is sure to be another kick-ass Halloween night. For now, though, it's about time to wrap up this recording and... Just as I always begin these episodes with a sort of random thing about myself, I always end with a sort of random question. This time I think I'll go with, what was the crappiest, weirdest, or most off-putting thing you received while trick-or-treating? And just to note, I actually came up with this question because when I was chatting with my friend, Jeff, the one who sent me the story about playing a dog for his friend's haunted house, he also mentioned being traumatized by receiving gospel tracts instead of candy. He told me, as an elementary school kid, I literally got a little pamphlet explaining how Halloween was the devil's holiday and how we would all burn in hell. It was terrifying. I was raised a religious kid. So I also saw a few of those in my day. Thankfully, most people in my church growing up weren't super anti-Halloween. Well, as long as we didn't, I don't know, wear devil costumes or similar ones that were considered mockery. But uh, there were always a few hardcore people who had those pamphlets and tried to convince everyone else they were right about Halloween being the devil's holiday or whatever. Uh, However, even if you weren't on the receiving end of you're all going to hell, you little Halloween loving heathens pamphlets, I feel like many of you surely remember that one house that always gave mini boxes of raisins or the time you got school supplies like a pencil or a mini ruler, right? So yeah, if you want to fill me in on the crappiest, weirdest, or most off-putting thing you received while trick-or-treating definitely shoot me a PM on social media. I'm at a geek saga, um, basically all platforms, or you can email a geek saga at gmail.com. In conclusion, I just want to give a shout out to our heroes tier patron, Tommy of the TKOK podcast network. Thanks so very, very much to Tommy for his longtime support of geek saga entertainment. And thank you for listening to my first ever all Halloween all the time episode. As always, if you have any thoughts on personal stories of mine you're interested in hearing or any particular rants or rambles you'd like me to go on, you can send me a DM at A Geek Saga on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, or Twitter, or again, email ageeksaga at gmail.com. Also, definitely follow me on the aforementioned social media accounts for the most current news and updates about this series, and please consider backing our Patreon at patreon.com slash geeksaga underscore entertainment for early access to not just these impulsive hyperfocus episodes, but a bunch of other perks and early access to all podcast versions of my other series.